How thick should your spore syringes and swabs be? Does it make a difference? Is it better if you have thicker? More spores, right? Let's talk about it. What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. And in today's video, I wanna talk about how thick your spore syringes should ideally be and also your spore swabs because I realize there's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of form over function when it comes to this topic in particular, especially from beginners uh, because they automatically assume that the thicker the spore swab, the thicker the spore syringe in particular because they're starting out usually with spore syringes, the better. And it's simply not the case. So I'd like to illustrate why that is and I'd like to show you guys uh, how it exactly works. So with spore syringes, I have a bunch of different spore syringes here uh, from different vendors. And this one, uh, yeah, this one in particular is one that I personally made for my own use. And you might be wondering why Sage? I mean, you, you could do agar, why use spore syringes? This is kind of an off point, but basically if I know that my spores are clean. I know that my syringes and my sterile technique is good. So I've never had any issue going from spore syringe directly to grain. And besides, most of the time, if I do use agar for multi-spore, I'll streak it, right? Like this, this is an example of a streak plate. We have lots of little mycelial growth coming in. And then I would just put it directly to grain anyways, and I've never had to clean it up, at least with the spores that I've used, that I've made. And so I was like, okay, let's just skip this whole process. And I've been using syringes for a while. It's just faster to inoculate a bunch of them with, with syringes. So we have a couple of spore syringes from different vendors. I'm not gonna name the vendors. Um, I, I'm just gonna talk to you guys about how they perform to illustrate my point. So basically in short, it's not a direct correlation that the thicker your spores, syringe or swab are the better. It's not that simple because well, what's more important is how fresh your spores are because that's going to ultimately determine how virile they are, right? And the older your spores or if they've been stored improperly, for example, that's all going to affect how virile your spores are and how quickly they're going to germinate and how much they're going to germinate. So let's say that you take a spore print uh, from fruits that you just got and then within the month, you make a spore syringe out of that spore print and then you inoculate your grain jars. When I do it like that, you will often find that you're gonna get germination very, very quickly and it's gonna germinate a ton. Me personally, when I do this, within, by the end of day two, I will start to see mycelium starting to pop up. And by the, by the end of day three, it's gonna be like a carpet of mycelium wherever I inoculated it. But my spore syringes, as you guys can see, that I personally make for my own use, are practically clear but there's still tons and tons of spores in there. If I use this, I'm gonna get a carpet of growth, like literally just like a rug of mycelium coming down very, very quickly. But my spore syringes are practically clear. Now this is a little bit more clear than I usually use, to be honest, uh, or maybe it's because this is a rusty white, so it's not as dark colored, the spores, so it might be a little bit harder to see. But usually I aim for like maybe just like one little clump, you know, maybe like small dots here and there is plenty. You don't need it to be, you know, very, very dark and just swirling around with spores. I've had people, for example, when I've sent spore swabs, uh, I'd send them a spore like swab like this and they would say, hey, it's too thin, you know, like there's only a very small surface area. It's covered with spores. And every single time it's beginners, right? Beginners message me that. And that's because they don't understand because you're used to seeing spore swabs like this or something like this. So this is like a gill swab. So that's basically where you go through the gills, right? Rather than go and put your swabs to a spore print like what this is made by. Um, so they don't know the difference between these two techniques. So they assume that your spore swab should be all just filled with just dark and discolored just like this area is. Now, as you can see with this one, it's not like the top part is not the, only the top part is this color, right? It's not the whole swab, but a lot of times these spore, these types of spore swabs will be discolored all over and they use that as a benchmark. But the fact of the matter is what you're seeing here is not the spores because this is from an albino variety, right? This is from an albino variety. You can't see the spores like you can with this guy. This, these are literally the spores. This, this is very, very dense. There's tons of spores in there. Um, this guy has less spores. So what you're seeing here is sort of the juices of the mushroom sort of being seeped into the swab from the gills, right? There's like, you can see gill fragments and stuff. Um, so it's not necessarily the spores, it's just discoloration going, you know, the blueing from the mushroom. So that's the first thing. Um, and second thing is that 
This is actually quite thick. You definitely don't need it to be this thick if all you want to do is inoculate plates. Now you might have to have it this thick if your spores are old. So if your spores are older, you know, they're going to reduce every single year that you store them, or, and especially if you store them in improper con conditions, then they're just going to degrade and degrade and degrade year after year. And every year you're going you're gonna to need more spores to get the same amount of germination points that you did before. So what I want to say here is it's not about the quantity of spores you see. It's not a direct correlation. It's about how have the spores been gathered, how have they been stored, and, and when were they harvested? How fresh are they? And this brings me to another important point and sort of one of the main important points I would say, because the other one, as I said, is just the age of the spores. How fresh is it? How has it been stored? But another thing is it's actually not a very good idea to have like overly thick spore syringes in particular, because what that means is, A, you don't need that much spores to inoculate stuff. They, you don't need much. Like you could, have, as I said, this clear syringe, Lots of germination points, lots of growth because it's fresh and it's clean. That's the most important thing. It's clean and it's virile. Um, now, if you start adding loads of spores because there's a lot of visual appeal, right? Beginners are like, oh, wow, that's great. There's so many spores. What value for money? Here's the thing, though. The more spores you bring in, the more potential contaminants you bring along with the spores. Because again, guys, spores are out in the open. They're open air, right? They're not sterile. If they were sterile, then they would never germinate. So by having more and more spores in there, you got more and more stuff that was exposed to the open air and you're gonna have more potential contaminants. Uh, so it's a law of diminishing returns and then it even goes further than that in that it's gonna increase, it's, it's kind of a negative then, it's not even like uh, positive returns that's diminishing. You're gonna be increasing the potential negative impacts to your grow by adding more spores because it's just completely unnecessary. It's just optics. Now I will show you guys an example. So this, I have two jars. I recently bought some spores from a very, very trusted spore vendor. So this, this was inoculated on the 22nd. Both of them were on the 22nd of July. And today is the 27th, right? Today is the 27th and I'm taking a look here and finally today we're starting to get spores and the thing is i completely messed up because it's been a while since i went directly from syringe to a grain jar and i sort of like my old like pf tech muscle memory kicked in and what i did was i shot like uh, a bunch of syringe liquid into each so i actually shot about five cc like almost half the syringe into each of these which was a big waste but maybe not because as you will see i'm not getting that much growth now you see, like the grains are prepared perfectly. They're still dry even though I shot more than I wanted to. Usually I recommend one to two cc max for a quart jar. But as you can see, they're completely fine and there's no water pooling. The grains have absorbed it because the grains have, in the first place, have not been made very, very soggy and wet. And speaking of which, the next video is gonna be all about it. I'm working on it. Uh, I've been editing it all day. It's gonna release um, pretty soon, hopefully. But as you can see, there's just not much growth at all. And th these syringes were very, very thick. They're full of spores, but they're just not doing much like certain sides of it are just not showing growth at all and it's been five days which is like sort of the typical time frame that you know five to seven days until you start to see growth but if your syringes are freshly made and properly made it doesn't matter how thick it is really uh, because the spores themselves are virile so you don't need much spores for for like you're gonna have a high success rate in terms of germinating having said that the opposite is also true as well you don't want to have too little spores since you would be giving any potential contaminants in your spores a better chance against the mycelium. But because these spores are older, and I know they're older because I checked, well, first, performance-wise, that many spores and it's taking this long. You know, I, and I've grown the same species as well and from spores that I got from my own successive generations. And those guys, you know, with the spores syringes I've made, really fast. But also I received the spore print from them and it says the date on there and it is literally uh almost a year old and that's not really a problem at all with coral lovers because i mean yeah sure you're gonna lose some but the fact of the matter is coral lovers can last a long time it's very species dependent you know certain species are a lot more sensitive to spores like for example pool lovers you know like ttbvi estero that kind of thing they are a lot more fragile they don't last as long as coral lovers do 
uh, they're going to get a lot more degeneration over time. So you want to use those as quickly as possible generally. But with core lovers, it's fine. Uh, thankfully, with the species that I received, that's also fine. Um, it's They're sort of like core lovers, they're grass lovers. But it just goes to show though that they're not very fresh spores. So even if, if they're fine and even if they will germinate, it's just going to take a little longer basically. Which again is not a huge issue because ultimately what's important is A, will you get germination? And even more important is, is it clean so that even if you do get germination, they're not gonna, you don't have to dump it because you got some contamination in your stuff, right? Your inoculant's dirty. So if it's clean, like these are the two main things. Speed is basically just a bonus on top of that. But as I said earlier, contamination does play a role if you use too much and it's completely unnecessary. You know, you're just gonna increase your risk of contamination. So here are the key takeaways of this video, guys. Basically, there's two types of spore swabs, okay? Um, a spore swab that's all completely covered with this coloration as you see here is not necessarily a good thing. It doesn't mean that there's more spores than something that's perhaps more concentrated here, or even like a third of this is gonna have plenty of spores, as long as the spores are fresh, or at least fresh enough. And the next point is that you don't want to have too many spores. Too many spores is not necessarily a good thing. You're gonna increase the potential contaminants that's gonna piggyback with your spores into your syringe. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so to end this video, I'm gonna show you guys some of these spore syringes that I have and you know talk about it a little bit. So this right here is from a vendor and this vendor is just, every single thing that I've gotten from this vendor has been just contaminated. city. I've never even gotten any growth from these guys total junk but you can see there's some spores in there you can see those little dots those are spores but total junk in, uh, bacteria city and over here this is also from another vendor and with these guys it doesn't contaminate as much but you can see that it's clear right but these guys don't germinate at all i've never gotten any growth of it uh, i've done many many plates and the only growth that i've gotten out of these guys is on one plate i got some mold one point of mold and that's about it so this is clear but it doesn't do anything but this right here the one i made clear but it's clean and you get a lot of growth quickly so and what so what i want to illustrate with that is that you know just because it's clear it doesn't mean it's necessarily one way just because it's thick it doesn't necessarily mean it's another it's a little bit more complicated than that and over here, the last one, we have Amazon. This is from a, uh, uh, a guy that I bought some genetics from many years ago. And a lot of his stuff was good, but this one in particular, the Amazon, I would always get purple mold all the time. And we could see a little bit of, you know, spores in there. Like, and these, these aren't necessarily like the thickest of syringes, but they get the job done for sure. But the problem is there's just contamination. Um, so again, cleanliness is really the most important thing. That's it. And then secondly, it's does it germinate? So yeah, that's pretty much the video for today, guys. Uh, thank you for watching and keep your eyes peeled for the next one for brown rice. It's gonna be a two part video. So I hope you guys enjoy. So this one was just a quick one to tide you guys over for the next video. I hope you guys have a great day or night. Michael File Sage, checking out for now.